Where do we stand with hydrogen cars? Or hydrogen for that matter? There was a time when hydrogen cars were presented as the vehicles of the future. We all hope that using hydrogen instead of gasoline would actually help with our eco-friendly future. But somewhere along the way, it seems like this dream of water-emitting cars took a pause. Or did it? And why is that? Is hydrogen actually in the future of our world? Does it even have a chance against the newest electric cars and batteries? Or maybe we can use hydrogen in other applications or even in our homes. Let's dive deeper into hydrogen fuel cells, exploring their workings, weighing the pros and cons, and uncovering the reasons behind the mere 72,000 hydrogen cars on the roads today in stark contrast to 1.5 billion gasoline cars and 26 million electric vehicles. Let's refresh our memory from the high school days and quickly review what hydrogen is, and I promise it will be very brief. So hydrogen sits at the very top of the periodic table. It is also rarely found in its pure state because it's highly reactive and combines with other elements. Not a big loner. It is most abundant element in the universe, making up 90% of it by weight. But it is almost always found as part of another compound, such as water, H2O, here on Earth. So here's our first problem. Problem. To power hydrogen cars, or anything for that matter, we have to extract hydrogen from other elements. And just a quick interruption, if you will enjoy this video today, I really hope that you will subscribe to the channel for more content like this one. I will truly, truly appreciate it. Now let's get back to the video. So there are various methods of hydrogen production, one of them being electrolysis and the other one steam methane reforming. The electrolysis process involves using electricity to split water into hydrogen and oxygen. Steam methane reforming, SMR, involves reacting steam with methane in the presence of a catalyst to produce hydrogen, carbon monoxide, and relatively small amounts of carbon dioxide as well. Steam methane reforming is great for energy efficiency, but unfortunately, quite damaging to the environment. There are three colors of hydrogen. I don't mean like real colors, but the way we represent processes used to make it. Starting with gray hydrogen. This one is the worst as far as CO2 emissions. Then blue hydrogen. It's a little bit better, still using the steam reforming uh, process, but trying to capture portions of that CO2 emissions and then storing it underground. This is called CCS. And then the last one, the holy grail, green hydrogen. This is where electrolysis plays a bigger role and the source of power used are renewable sources like solar or wind or both. Unfortunately, as of last year, of these rainbow colors, gray hydrogen was the most widely produced at 92% of hydrogen being gray hydrogen. So as cool as hydrogen cars sound with its only emission being water and heat, the fact that production of that power source is not very environmentally friendly, I am not too sure if a whole lot of people would decide to buy a car like that and feel good about themselves. Hydrogen and FCEVs offer a notable advantage though. The sole emission, just like I said, in the tailpipe is pure drinkable water. This stands in stark contrast to internal combustion engines that release numerous harmful chemicals and carcinogens. So in essence, if we can produce green hydrogen with the use of renewables, hydrogen cars would be a genuinely eco-friendly fuel option. Now let's look at the history of hydrogen cars. So hydrogen powered cars are not a new concept at all, but the persistent challenges surrounding them beg the question, why haven't they gained significant traction? Let's rewind to 1806. Yes, you heard me correct, 1806. The first hydrogen power engine appeared, making an early venture into the hydrogen-based technology, though unsuccessful at the time. Approximately 60 years later, the first functional hydrogen car, a three-wheel hippomobile, emerged. However, it faced decline in the early 1900 when the gasoline-powered combustion engines surged, dominating the automotive industry. 
In the early 1960s, General Electric developed a fuel cell electrical power system for NASA's space program. These hydrogen fuel cells are still utilized today, providing drinking water for space crews during their flights. Many of you saw Matt Damon produce water from unused fuels on Mars. And I really like Martian movies, so I just had to throw it in here. Let me know if you like that movie too. But getting back to the video. General Motors later introduced the GM Electrovan in 1966, often regarded as the initial modern hydrogen fuel cell vehicle. Fast forward to 2023, almost 2024, there are 72,000 hydrogen vehicles driving the road. And again, compare that to 1.5 billion gasoline cars on the roads today and 26 million electric vehicles. So what happened? There are a few reasons why hydrogen cars lost tractions over the years. Until renewables existed at scale, making hydrogen required vast amounts of fossil fuels or nuclear energy, which made hydrogen both more expensive and less efficient than other ways of storing and delivering energy. So over the decades, it just was not worth it yet. We currently don't have too many options to choose from as far as FCEVs go. As of today, there are two fuel cell car models available in the USA, the Hyundai Nexo and the Toyota Mirai. The Hyundai price starts at around $60,000 and Toyota Mirai at around $50,000. Now, both of these cars come with about $15,000 in complimentary fuel, plus possible local and dealer incentives, not to mention good financing options. So price-wise, it's really not that bad. I mean, you're getting 258 times of charging your car or refueling your car rather than going to a gas station. But the problem is the fact that those cars are actually only available in California. So even if I wanted to test it, I really couldn't unless I moved there for a few months. And even there, as of October of 2023, there were 59 hydrogen refueling stations in the United States. 58 of them are in California and there is one in Hawaii. Now, in contrast, there are over 100,000 gas stations in the USA today, over 10,000 in Texas alone. So one of the biggest challenges is obviously refueling. Even with EVs, if there weren't any charging station, you can just bring your car home and charge it there. Not many of us have access to pure hydrogen at home, so our only option is hydrogen refueling stations. And infrastructure offers convenience, and without adequate infrastructure, hydrogen cars are a huge hassle, unfortunately. So since there aren't that many hydrogen cars driving around, there isn't much of a demand for investors to invest and build hydrogen charging stations. This world is all about money, as sad and not right as it sounds, it's the truth. Unless there is a money opportunity in something, we will not be investing in things out of the kindness of our hearts. Another big drawback is unfortunately hydrogen energy density. So even though it's one of the gases with an extremely high gravimetric energy density at 100 plus, 120 plus megajoules per kilogram, for a 300 mile drive range, an FCEV will need about five kilograms of hydrogen, which does not sound like a whole lot. But now imagine one kilogram of gasoline, which is about 0.26 gallons, and then one kilogram of feathers. So even though with high pressure tanks of 700 bar or 10,000 PSI, five kilograms of hydrogen would need the volume of around 200 liters or about 52 gallon tank of gasoline. Most cars have about 11 to 20 gallons tanks today, so we are talking three to five times the size need the volume size. Not to mention the energy losses along the way. We're talking about extracting hydrogen from other elements with the use of some sort of electricity, transporting it to the refueling station, and then pumping it into an FCEV, and then converting it back to electricity is just not super, super efficient. About 60% of energy you put in gets lost along the way. Alternatively, you could just use the same energy to directly charge a lithium ion battery that powers an electric motor in the car. So what? 
Should we just completely give up on hydrogen? Well, not so fast. If we're going into this eco-friendly way of life in the next 50 years, not even 10, politicians tend to be very optimistic. <laughs> there are surely other applications where hydrogen could be used, such as heavy industry, particularly, or long distance transport, where hydrogen could find a niche and actually a very good one. So let's talk about semi-trucks. We sure know that batteries will be a tough one here, and having an electric truck means a whole lot of power needed to pull those heavy goods across the country, not to mention the cost of stops if we need to recharge. If we spend about one hour charging, fast charging our electric vehicle, how much time would it take for a semi truck to charge up? unless somehow we plan the charging times around the much needed break for the truck drivers, it would seem like a big waste of time. And as you know, time is money. But we don't have good infrastructure for that either. Tesla's semi-truck is only being used at a few locations and there are not a whole lot of charging stations for the electric truck industry either, not to mention the cost of fueling that electric truck. So now the question is, since we don't have the infrastructure for either the electric truck or the hydrogen truck, which one will the world invest in? Which one will we build the infrastructure around? Please make sure to give this video a big like if you've enjoyed this content so far. Hydrogen is by no means the silver bullet that will help with everything, but it does make sense in some scenarios. It's not about all or nothing approach, rather it's about deciding where hydrogen can outshine batteries, especially in applications like heavy duty transport, trains, cargo ships, and even aviation. While electric vehicles have made a big impact in the residential sector, these larger modes of transport remain a challenge for meeting climate goals. So where do we go from here? I mean, seriously, the EV revolution has been happening for many years, but we need to find a solution for other applications if we want to hit the climate goals. Because at the end of the day, the idea does not just have to be great. It has to make financial sense too. And as you know, we like that instant gratification, don't we? Let me know down in the comments, what are your thoughts? Thank you again so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.